Okay, it's now time for member statements. The member from Bruce Gray owns health. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. On April 26 marked the beginning of National Immunization Awareness Week in Canada, and I want to take a moment to bring attention to this important event. Immunization has been heralded as one of the greatest achievements in public health of the 20th century. It has resulted in the control, eradication, or near elimination of numerous infectious diseases and saved more Canadian lives over the past 50 years than any other health intervention. Yet, despite these tremendous scientific advances, we are seeing preventable illnesses making the news in record numbers. As a society, we have taken for granted the impact vaccines have had on our daily lives. Because we are not witnessing firsthand the effects of these diseases, we have forgotten their debilitating and sometimes lethal impact. We have forgotten what the pain and suffering looks like and that it is because when immunization programs work well, we forget that they are working at all. Vaccines are designed to protect the young, the old, the vulnerable, and everyone in between. And in an age where healthcare centers on acute and chronic treatment, immunization allows us to flip the paradigm, protecting people before they become patients. Thanks to vaccines, it is almost unheard of that a child will die in Canada of smallpox, diphtheria, or bacterial meningitis. Thanks to vaccines, our hospitals no longer need to treat the devastating effects of polio with iron lungs. Thanks to vaccines, we can protect our seniors against shingles and pneumonia. It is one of the best health measures that you can take to protect yourself and your loved ones from disease and illness, and a cost-effective public health measure that reduces the burden on Ontario's health system through fewer hospital admissions and reduced medical care expenses. During National Immunization Awareness Week, I ask of you, instead of forgetting the past, let's remember it and work towards improving our future. As such, I respectfully remind all members of the House to keep up to date with their immunizations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. And the member of Hamilton East Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to recognize an instrument for every child, an outstanding cultural initiative that enriches the children of my home city of Hamilton. The Hamilton Music Collective is a charitable organization formed in 2008 by local educators, business owners, and performers who share an interest in music, their community, and in particular our youth and children. It launched an instrument for every child in 2009, its collaboration with the Hamilton Philharmonic Orchestra and the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board. The program provides elementary school children in Hamilton's inner city schools and challenged neighbourhoods with the opportunity to learn to play an instrument, participa participate in musical groups and receive free musical instruction on a weekly basis. It serves children who demonstrate a desire to learn music and inspires children at risk to realize their full potential as students, musicians, and citizens. Since its inception, the program has received tremendous support from within the Hamilton community as well as on the regional level. It could be a model for other communities on how to bring music education into inner city schools and community centres by maximizing partnerships between local organizations, school boards, boys and girls clubs, and local businesses. I have asked members of the Cabinet to study provincial support for an instrument for every child in order to ensure its future sustainability and continued enrichment of the lives of our children. To all of the participants and volunteers in this program, thank you for your wonderful work you do. Thank you. Member Statement, Member for Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in this House today to tell you about the pride of Burlington, our teen tour band, Canada's oldest and largest youth marching band. From its beginnings in 1947, where 75 girls and boys gave their first performance, the Burlington Teen Tour Band has since travelled the world, representing Canada and racking up an impressive number of awards along the way. The band has performed for heads of state and royalty, as well as on television, in movies, and at prestigious events, such as the Rose Bowl Parade and the 70th anniversary of Pearl Harbor, to name a few. Just recently, on April 12th, I had the privilege of watching the band perform in Burlington to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the liberation of the Netherlands by Canadian forces and the 10th anniversary of the twinning of the city of Burlington and the city of Appledorn. From May 1st to 12th, the Teen Tour Band will tour the Netherlands, representing Canadian youth, to commemorate the liberation anniversary. Highlights include the Thank You Canadian Veterans Parade in Wanganigan, where the Dutch royal family will be in attendance, an evening concert for the opening of the Burlington Park in Appledorn, a veterans parade in Appledorn, and a concert with the Royal Dutch Air Force Band. The Teen Tour Band members will also have the opportunity to speech with Dutch high school students who are caretakers of Canadian war graves, and they will meet with adults who were teenagers themselves at the time of liberation. I would like to congratulate the Teen Tour Band and their boosters, parents and supporters who worked tirelessly to support them, and wish them all the very best for their upcoming trip to the Netherlands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from the Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Speaker. I'm pleased to share with the House some good news coming out of my riding of Huron Bruce. This July, 
this summer, after 25 years of hard work and community planning, the Godrich to Guelph Rail Trail will be officially opening. The Godrich to Guelph Rail Trail, otherwise known as G2G Rail Trail, runs along the former CPR Railway on the land that stretches over 127 kilometres between Guelph and Godrich. The G2G Rail Trail project, as it was formed, it would by volunteers and an advisory committee who stepped up about five years ago to make it happen, and they took plans that were drafted over 25 years ago to work to complete the G2G. There is huge support around the community for this project, and a number of steward groups and stakeholder groups throughout my riding and the 13 communities along the trail have been an asset to its completion. The group is calling this project an iconic integration between rural and urban Ontario, and it has also been referred to as the backbone of Ontario trails. The entire stretch, being approximately 137 kilometres, will preserve a green space of, a, of about five square kilometres, which is actually larger speaker than downtown Toronto. And I would like to close by thanking all the volunteers who made this trail happen after 25 years. The G2G may be the backbone of Ontario trails, but it's these volunteers who are the backbones of our communities, and projects like this would never happen without them. The G2G Rail Trail is an incredible community project, and I can't wait to see what else they have in store. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Stavis, member for Timmy Shames Bay. To the members of this House, most of you will know that there's been a lot of sawmills and paper mills and others that have closed down across northern Ontario over the last number of years. But the thing that is really starting to frustrate people to the largest degree is when you see a mill like what we saw in Erica Falls and Smooth Rock Falls close its doors. But what you now see is truckload after truckload after truckload trucking wood cut in Ontario forest, both popular and conifer, and transferring it into the province of Quebec for pro processing. It is a very bad policy. Our, our, our policy should be that wood that is, pro that is cut in Ontario should be processed through Ontario mills. If there needs to be wood exchanges, because those have existed for many years where mills across the border exchange fibre because there's some fibre uh, exchanges that do make some sense, but that they're essentially uh, equal when it comes to the amount of wood being used, that is not a bad thing and nobody will stand in the par part of it. But imagine how the community feels in Iroquois Falls and in Cochrane where they've seen their mills go down and there's between 600 to 1,000 loads of poplar and conifer that has been shipped out into the province of Quebec from those particular forests. At the same time that we have mills like Little John Enterprises, who's trying to be able to get uh, a certainty on wood when it comes to popular so that he can operate his mill. Imagine how they feel when they see the wood that could be feeding their mill being transferred over to Quebec and not given an opportunity to add value here in the province of Ontario. I call on the government to stop this practice. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from Trinity Spadina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize and congratulate OCA University on their 100th annual uh, graduate exhibition, which runs from April 29th to May 3rd of this year. Over the five-day exhibit, approximately 25,000 guests will view the final thesis work from more than 900 promising young artists and designers. The university, which was founded in 1860, 1876, boasts a beautiful, well-organized, inspiring campus that continues to attract the best talent from across Ontario and Canada. It makes me very proud every time I walk by Grange Park and look up the uh, Sharp Centre of Design. OCAT has a long-standing reputation as a premier de destination for arts and design students in Ontario and we are very fortunate to house it and its talented staff and students in the writing of Trinity Spadina. To celebrate this tremendous milestone, I invite all members of this legislature, as well as all members of my community, to visit this historical exhibit and experience the fantastic work of OCAT University students. Thank you to the members of OCAT for being in the gallery today, and again, congratulations on your historic 100th annual Graduate exhibit. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stamets, the member from the PN Carlton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to seek unanimous consent to use a prop. Please stop the clock, please. The member from the PN Carlton is seeking <laughs> is seeking unanimous consent to use a prop during her statement. Do we agree? Agree. Agree. 
Speaker, I'm being publicly shamed today because my wonderful Ottawa Senators lost to the Montreal Canadiens on Saturday. Oh. As a result, I made a commitment to my dear friend Jean Roussel, who's a member of the National Assembly in Quebec, to wear a Montreal Canadiens sweater if they lost in the legislature and deliver a statement. Now, this being Toronto, where they aspire to have an NHL team, they do not actually have any NHL jerseys in this city, whether they're Senators or Montreal Canadiens. So it is up to my dear friend, the House Leader for the government, to initiate this beautiful handwritten prop. And of course, I would also like to say thank you to the traditorious member from uh, Temiskaming Cochrane, who also thinks it was okay because he is a Montreal Canadiens fan. That said, this place has many heavy moments, but today I think we can all get behind a Canadian team and encourage them to win the Stanley Cup. If my Ottawa Senators can't do it, go Habs, go! Okay, okay. Member statements. The uh, member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This past weekend, I was happy to support in my community the fourth annual Transplant Trot, a fundraising event for the Canadian Transplant Association. On Saturday morning at Waterloo Park, supporters of organ and tissue donations gathered for an annual run and walk to raise funds and awareness. Now, similar runs were planned in 10 other cities across Canada. Mr. Speaker, currently in Ontario, there are more than 1,500 people who are waiting for for organ and tissue transplants so that they may have a second chance at life. Although there are 11.8 million of us in this province who are eligible, only 3.1 million have bothered to register. That's 26 per cent of our population, and I think that we can do better. I met a number of people whose lives have been changed and saved by organ donations. Recipients of heart, lung, kidney, and liver transplants are thriving today because others have generously given this gift of continued life. I also met Julie from the town of Conestogo four years ago while she was driving with her 11-year-old daughter. In their car, they were hit by a drunk driver. Although Julie survived, her daughter did not, and Julie made the decision to donate her child's organs. Mr. Speaker, Julie and the other people at Saturday's event encourage all of us to register as organ donors. It's as easy as going to beadonor.ca. What only takes a few minutes of your time could mean years of life for a person in need. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Ottawa, Ohio. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was pleased to be part of the Rotary Youth Awards in my community of Orléans. As a Rotarian and an MPP, it was an absolute pleasure to be in the company of 27 dedicated and talented young people. These young people, aged between 14 and 29, were honored for their participation in their community, their entrepreneurship, their musical talent, and their academic success. The recipients were nominated by their peers, teachers, mentors, and other community members, not only for their dedication and passion, but for also the embodying the Rotary four-way test, which has to do with trust, fairness, goodwill, and their action being beneficial for all. I was blown away by how much each of these young people have accomplished or overcome in order to be a valuable members of their school in larger communities, like spending countless hours practicing dance, singing, acting, and playing instruments, volunteering their time to local charities, fundraising impressive amounts for international causes, or taking the time to mentor other others to be as successful as well. Felicitations. Congratulations to these amazing young people. Dedication are impressive and will get them very far. They're showing us the road towards the youth of Ontario. President Len Goddard and newly elected Presidents Theresa Whitmore and other Rotarians who organized this wonderful event. Merci. Thank you. Merci. I thank all members for their statements. It's now time for.